Hello and welcome to Ottawa Citadel Online. Thank you for joining us for worship today as we continue in our Advent series. Before we begin, I have a couple of announcements. If you would like to sign up for a, a kettle shift today, uh, please connect with Captain Jeff Arkell in the office and he'll be glad to sign you up. The second announcement is that we will be having our Christmas concert today at 3 p.m. online. And if you do not have your tickets yet, it's not too late. Go to ottawacitadel.eventpride.ca and get your ticket. And now we will be led in our call to worship by Sister Modupe Orashigun. Our call to worship was written by Miriam Spies of the United Church of Canada. We gather together in the name of the one who bids us come. We gather together to hear the word of the one who is love. We gather together to sing praises of the one who teaches peace. Come, let us worship. Let's begin our worship with the singing of an old favorite carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. I love the way the peaceful scene of Little Town of Bethlehem as it opens with, O Little Town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Let's sing it together. <laughs> Let us pray. Our good and loving Father, we thank you, we appreciate you for another privilege to come before your throne this morning. We are not taking it for granted. We thank you, we appreciate you for all that you have done in our lives, especially with what is going on all over the world. We thank you for the peace that you have given to us, your children, you told us that they, there would be there would be problem, but you said we should not worry. That you are you, be, you will always be there for us. Thank you because you have been there for us. Thank you, you are the one that has been giving us peace, and you did not allow fear to reign in our lives. Thank you for all your provisions. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for not allow any evil to befall us. Because you said it in your word, that in time of trouble, you will be with us. You will deliver us, and you will grant us your salvation. Thank you, thank you. We worship you. We appreciate you. We are not taking this opportunity for granted. Daddy, we say may your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Father, we ca Daddy, we cannot thank you enough for all that you have done for us. Your goodness in our lives is more than the sand of the sea, and we can never number them. We thank you for every soul that has gathered before you this morning. Your word said in your presence there is fullness of joy. Thank you for the joy that you are always filling our hearts with. Father, we worship you. We honor you. 
we appreciate you. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that you sent to, to this world of sin to come and die for us so that we can have life and have it in abundance. We thank you for the blood of your son that was shed on the cross of Calvary that has made atonement for our sin. Daddy, we thank you for this special love. We appreciate you for everything that you have done. Father, even if our hair is full of tongues, it's not even enough to praise the holy name. Daddy, we have come to your presence to worship you this morning. Father, be with us. Take absolute control. All our prayers, all our songs, everything we shall do today, let it be acceptable unto you. Father, we thank you because you have heard us. Your word said your father will always hear you and will answer you. Glory, honor, and adoration be unto your holy name for hearing us and answering us. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. The first Sunday of Advent, we lit the prophecy candle in our Advent wreath. It is also called the candle of hope. We lit it again today as we remember Jesus who was born Christ and King. And we remember that he will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us. She's reading the hope, she's lighting the hope candle, I should say. Yeah. Last Sunday we lit the Bethlehem candle the love candle. We light it again today as uh, we remember that Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, has come as Savior and Redeemer. The babe of Bethlehem has come out of love to bring redemption. Today we lit the third candle of Advent. It is the shepherd candle, the candle of joy. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, Mary was filled with joy. She sang a song that began with the words, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Just as the birth of Jesus gave great joy to his mother, so his presence in the world gave joy to those who had none before. He held them and gave them hope when uh, they believed in him. Uh, from hope grows joy. Shepherds on the hillside outside the city were told by a multitude of angels that the babe born in Bethlehem would bring joy to the world. But more importantly, he would be the joy of the world. We light the candle of joy to, remem to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have joy and that brought him, there will be everlasting joy on earth. Joy is like a shining, shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the joy we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the joy you give us we ask that uh, we, as we wait for all your promises to come true and uh, for Christ to come again, that you would remind, remain present in us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear you, your word, and uh, to do your will by sharing your joy with each other. We ask in the name of Jesus, the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7, and it says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as the warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them. The bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be foil for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the mighty Lord will accomplish this. Amen. Good morning. Today we're continuing our journey through Advent and the unwrapping of the names of Jesus. On our first Sunday of Advent, Major Corey unwrapped the name Jesus, Light of the World. And last Sunday, Captain Jeff unwrapped the second name, the word, Jesus the Word. This morning, we're unwrapping the third name, Jesus, Prince of Peace. You know, each name of Jesus seems more precious than the last, but it's hard to top the Prince of Peace. We want to know the peace that the angels proclaimed that first Christmas when they announced the coming of the Lord of the universe and the heavens as a little baby born in a hick town called Bethlehem. We long for peace, whether it's peace in our world, peace in our families, or peace in ourselves. Defining peace is difficult. Some would say that peace is the absence of chaos. Now, to me, there's a lot of gray between chaos and peace. The Oxford Dictionary defines peace as freedom from anxiety, disturbance, or inner conflict, and a state of calm or tranquility. Peace can also refer to the absence of war or what we have when law and order prevails. As I look around today, I fear we're far from a state of calm and tranquility. We're not free of war, and sometimes even in Canada, law and order is not complete. COVID is attacking our health, our economy, and our sense of well-being. Many are participating in marches and protests and rising up against current norms and government's policies. There's unrest and animosity everywhere. Isaiah 9 recorded the prophecy of the coming of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. 700 years later, in Luke, we find the record of the angels proclaiming his arrival among us. Today, more than 2,000 years after that arrival, amid much unrest, it's not surprising that some, perhaps many, are saying, where's the peace? So what are we really looking for when we search for peace? I like the vision of peace as expressed in the Hebrew word shalom. You see, while shalom includes our English word peace, it's really much more encompassing in its meaning. Isaiah and other Old Testament prophets tried to paint a picture of shalom peace. The shalom peace that over which the Prince of Peace would exert his control. Shalom peace includes a holistic sense of well-being. It envisions a state where people are honest where the weak become strong, where the foolish are wise, and the wise are humble. Isaiah's vision of peace speaks of streams in the desert, streams that would give relief from thirst and support life itself. Joel adds to the vision of peace, referring to mountains that run with wine. Now, that part might be difficult for salvationists, 
But keep in mind that mountains running with wine was probably referring to huge harvests from the vineyards that would have been planted on the hills and terraces. So for Salvationist peace today, let's think of amazing crop yields rather than flowing wine. Well, getting back to shalom peace. When shalom peace exists, there is no crying. People sleep well at night without fear. Lions and lambs lie down together, and nobody ends up being somebody's breakfast. All of nature is fruitful. All humans live as brothers and sisters. All people look to God, and as the psalmist said, delight in his presence. This is the vision of peace for which we all yearn, and it is the peace made possible with the coming of Jesus, Prince of Peace. Indeed, with his coming on that first Christmas, Jesus cracked open the doors of shalom, shalom peace. His work to bring full shalom peace will be complete when he returns. The Prince of Peace actually brings us four kinds of peace. First, and most important, the Prince of Peace brings us upward peace because he is the one who makes peace between God and people. You see, when sin entered the world through Adam and Eve, a natural hostility between God and people developed. But God loved us so much, he sent his son into the world to save us from sin and to restore our relationship with God. This truth is recorded in Romans 5.1, where it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. All we need to do to receive upward peace is to accept Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, as our personal Lord and Savior. When we accept Christ, our sins are forgiven, our crimes eliminated, and we can then enter into a complete and peaceful existence with God. Christmas reminds us that God sent his son, the Prince of Peace, to bring us upward, saving Prince, peace with God. Once we have upward peace, the Prince of Peace can bring us inward peace. You see, God wants us to be at peace with ourselves, and he wants us to have inward peace in all that we do. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. This is a beautiful verse, and it's really full of meaning. The word keep means to guard, protect, hide, and conceal. In other words, those who meet the conditions set out by God, and we'll get into those conditions, are protected because they're hidden in the Lord. Now, it's important to understand that we're not kept from trouble, but we're hidden in the Lord, the one who walks through trouble with us each day. Now, I mentioned there are conditions to accessing inner peace. To claim tranquility and peace of heart and soul in the midst of life's adversities, we must keep our minds steadfast on and our trust in him. Steadfast means firmly fixed in place or immovable. To have steadfast minds, we must lean entirely on the Lord's promises with all our thoughts and thinking processes. To do otherwise would lead to Satan thinking. Now, Satan thinking is the kind of thinking that allows Satan, or the devil, to slip through the cracks of our minds and start building walls that would separate us from Jesus. The other condition of peace of mind is we must fully trust in him. One definition of trust is to have a firm belief in the reliability of something. When we really trust in something, we're so sure about it that we have no concern that it could possibly fail. It's like when we sit in a chair. We don't worry that it'll give way. Well, at least most of us don't. When we trust in the Lord, we can throw ourselves upon him like we would throw ourselves into a chair and be absolutely sure that he will not give way. Whatever is stealing our peace of mind, whatever is 
we may be worrying about, whatever may cause us anxiety, we can rest assured that the Prince of Peace has come to bring inward peace, the peace that will protect us from cares and worries in this life. Christmas reminds us that God sent his son, the Prince of Peace, to bring inward living peace. The third element of peace is outward peace. Outward peace is the peace that we have with the people around us. As Christians, we're called to bring, build relationships so that we can be peacemakers with others. As we work at being peacemakers, we have two things we must keep in mind. First, we're not asked to be peacemakers at any cost. We must not submit to lies, injustice, or false claims about God just to try to keep the peace. Second, God doesn't ask us to do the impossible. He knows that there are some people who just won't let us live in peace with them. Nevertheless, we must try. As Romans 12, 18 says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, I'll repeat that part, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Christmas reminds us that God sent his son, the Prince of Peace, to bring us outward peace so that we can live in peace with others. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, has already come to bring us upward, inward, and outward peace. And he's coming again to bring us forward peace. Forward, or everlasting peace, is the shalom peace that Isaiah, Joel, and others called the eternal peace. That's what they tried to paint that picture of eternal peace. When Jesus comes again, he will establish the, his kingdom, and we who believe will enter for eternal peace. With the government on his shoulders, the Prince of Peace will reign, there will be no wars, and peace, justice, and righteousness will prevail. Christ's return is something that we can be rock solid sure will happen. In Acts 1, 11, the angel who was present at his ascension confirmed Christ's return when he said, this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. There are many other prophecies regarding Jesus' return. Indeed, according to the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, Jesus' return to bring peace to earth is mentioned 318 times in the Bible. For all who know Christ, we can live now in the promise of forward peace, peace eternal, in the presence of our Lord. Christmas reminds us that God sent his son into the world just as he promised he would. And it assures us that this same son will return, not as a baby born on a winter night, but as the Prince of Peace who brings eternal peace with God. Jesus, Prince of Peace, has given us upward peace with God. He's made a way for inward peace with ourselves and outward peace with others. And he will bring forward eternal peace when he comes again. Have you received peace with God? Have you, do you know his son, Jesus? If you don't, today is the day to do so. In Luke 2, 14, we read, Glory to God in the highest and on earth Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Be assured, his favor rests on us. The Prince of Peace has come. May we all know his peace now and forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, Prince of Peace. As we approach Christmas 2020, May it be a time for those who have not yet recognized Christ's saving power to accept him and to receive your peace. May it be a time for those who have already claimed Jesus as Savior to know you again, to know your upward, inward, and outward and forward peace. Help us to live in peace as Christmas, this Christmas and in the coming year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let me leave you with a benediction provided by God to Moses in Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you.